Welcome to the More Than OK podcast, a wellbeing and family podcast about tips, strategies and stories on how to be more than OK. My name is Belinda Bray. I'm a mum, a wife, a teacher and someone who's always trying to be more than OK. I love learning about wellness and wellbeing and I love bringing what I learn into my life, my family and my classroom. So I hope what I have for you today is helpful and inspires you to be more than OK. So today in the studio, we have Mr. David Wilcox. Welcome. Hi, thanks. So David is our Director of Middle Years here at Highlands Christian College. So I've asked David to come on to this episode uh, to talk about his family. So when I think of the Wilcox family, I think of a really strong family. So just to get to know you, we always do quick fire questions. Sure. So you ready? Yep. One, how do you have your coffee? Uh, Skinny flat with a half caramel. Wow, okay. <laughs> do they make that here at Highlands? As they do. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. They know my order. Okay, what is your favourite thing to do on a weekend? Uh, as little as possible, although often it might involve a little bit of gardening and certainly hanging out with the family, doing something like that. Yeah. Okay. But I like to chill on the weekend. Yeah, that's yep. good. What's your favourite kind of car? Ooh, uh, if you're buying it, <laughs> it would be an Aston Martin. Oh, classy. Okay. If I Very have to nice. pay for it, I'd probably be going with a Mustang. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So our topic for today is building strong family foundations. Mm. So when I think of a strong family, I often think of the Wilcox family. Oh, thank you. I do think that um, you guys have something special mm. and I want to like find that essence All right. and see if we can share what that essence is with Let's our... see if we can do it. Yeah. So David, tell us about your family. Okay. Uh, my wife's name is Judith. She's a speech pathologist. Um, we've been married for 30 plus a tiny bit years. Wow. So That's long good. enough. Um, two of my kids are teachers. Um, one is a nurse and our youngest is just finishing off some studies around youth work. And I have a daughter-in-law who oh, was yes. working as oh, a... Oh, here comes the next announcement. Sorry. Yes, go. <laughs> she was working as a chaplain. <laughs> However, she's had to give that up because she's just delivered our very first grandchild. That's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gorgeous. So we have so, a grandson just in the last few weeks. That's yeah. really exciting. Yeah, it is. It's really cool. So when I think of your family, you guys always do things together. Always. So what sort of things do you do as a family? Yeah, look, it's really interesting because now obviously we've got four adult kids mm. and uh, well, five in a sense if you, you count my daughter-in-law and um, it's harder to get the whole family together but we actually really still strive to do that. Yep. But that's because as, as the kids were growing up, we always planned intentionally mm. for kids to do things together, for us as a whole family to do things together. So there were so many things in our life where Judith and I would go, it's actually really important to do something that identifies us as a family, Mm. uh, that actually makes us unique, uh, and that in all of those things that we did, it was all about saying, this is who we are, this is how we identify, and it's actually about having... Uh, like a common memory. Mm. Um, So you know we we lived in Canada in 2005. Uh, I taught there for six months. Uh, Kids went to school at that time. Um, And that became this pivotal moment in our Mm. life. So we kind of even now talk about, you know, oh, that memory, did that happen BC or like before (laughs) Canada or after Canada? Because it's this pivotal moment. And it's so important to have that in your family. It identifies who you are. So that was the sort of stuff that that meant that we always would try to do things together. So it's even down to things like we would, even now, the kids, any of the kids that are at home, we would expect that we'd sit down and have a meal together uh, in the evening. And and it's just that moment of connecting and yeah. talking about the day mm. um, and sometimes getting into debates, which is interesting, <laughs> especially with our youngest. He's pretty good at uh, wanting to debate anything that we didn't agree with. He'd want to debate it. So, yes. yeah, oh, it's right. that sort of stuff that, that I guess made it intentional yeah. in terms of let's do something together. Great. What other things did you and Judith um, intentionally put into your parenting? Oh. So many things, yeah. When Mike and I were starting a family, our thing was we wanted children who were a pleasure to have around, which sounds really corny, but we wanted children who could talk to adults yeah. and, but could also then gauge when it was an adult conversation and yeah. who could contribute. So what are some of the intentions that you and Judith had? 
we did similar things. And one of the things that we really valued is that for a really long time, the, the church that we belong to has been multi-generational. Mm. So our kids grew up relating to adults and even much older adults. So our, our parents have never lived in Toowoomba. Mm. So our kids, while they had time with their grandparents, it was actually important for them to have older grandparently like yeah. people around them. Um, and, and so that was important. Mm. So as you say, being able to relate with adults, a really important thing. One of the things that I guess spun off from that is that um, all of our kids had mentors in their mm. life. So important to have mentors. Yeah. Uh, and particularly for our older son, um, as he was going through youth group, he had a, a, a string of youth group leaders, about four young men, who were kind of that half generation ahead, mm. which is, I think is a really good gap, yeah. uh, where they would speak into his life. Mm. And I actually see a bunch of stuff about Hayden um, now that has developed in him because of those people that were speaking into his life. That's great. And what we wanted is for our kids to ev eventually get to the point where they were then being that mm. for younger people That's as awesome. well. So even while, again, Hayden was at youth group, we were encouraging him to speak positively into the lives of younger kids yeah, as great. well. So it's that sort of, you know, kind of half generation up, or maybe not half generation down, but certainly younger people, yeah. where someone's speaking in and then they are modelling that in themselves mm. by speaking to younger people yeah, as well. Great. So that was really important. Yeah. Um, and I know with your own kids, that's similar too. You've got... Yeah. You've got people that will speak into their lives. Yeah. And your grandparents, their grandparents yeah, they, are around we close. We have all our family around. That must be really valuable yeah, that we is. didn't get. Yeah, it is. And we didn't grow up with our cousins. Uh, they live down in New South Wales. So um, our kids have grown up with their cousins. And it's just a whole other dynamic seeing like my siblings being aunts and uncles mm. and being able to input into my children's lives. It's yeah, really yeah. great. One of the other things that we were really intentional about from when our kids were really, really little was the way that they spoke to each other. Mm. Um, so we would always pull them up really quickly mm. if their words towards one of their siblings was less than respectful. And it doesn't mean we didn't allow them to sort of verbally fight things out if yeah. that was needed, but we always wanted them to learn ways of doing that that was um, productive and probably proactive. Yeah. Uh, so when there was a bit of a fight, we would come in and we would say, all right, let's, let's see what we can do about making this yeah. right, but I'm not going to let you speak to your sibling in that yeah. way. The other thing that, that I remember hearing a lot of years ago uh, that I've, on rare occasions, but I've been happy to play the card, is for me to go to one of the kids and say, I heard how you spoke to your mother. Mm. That's not okay. And yeah. I'd often put it in terms of, you know, you're not just speaking to your mother, you're speaking to my wife. Yeah. And I will not let anyone speak to my wife in that mm. way. And that helps to get the kids to understand a few things. One, the relationship between husband yeah. and wife, and that that's, that's sacrosanct. That's the most important thing yeah. in a family is that, that strong relationship there. But it also sets a foundation for them to know what's an okay way to speak to people and yeah. what's not okay yeah. in those situations. So... That sort of thing happened. Yeah. I think also having your kids involved in each other's lives is really yeah. important. And while it hasn't happened probably so much with our family, I know a family where there's just a couple of kids, a boy and a girl, and he's into motorbikes mm. and she's into dance. Yeah. And in that particular family, it is a family tradition. Oh, I want to talk about traditions. But it's a family <laughs> tradition that when the, when the motocross is happening, the whole family goes, Yes. including the sister. Mm -hmm. And when there's a dance competition happening, the whole family goes, including the brother. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not separating the family and going, mm -hmm. this is you, this is you. Yeah. It's actually going as a unit, this is you, but we value that. And this is you, and we value yeah. that. And we, we show that value by our words, but yeah. particularly in this case, by our actions, yeah. by turning up and celebrating what's going yeah. on. And yeah. just for a life skill too, like it's really great for a boy to know how to behave at the ballet. <laughs> sure. Uh, but then also for girls to... Um, Find a boy at the motocross. Well, Is that what you were thinking? I wasn't sure where the other side of that <laughs> conversation was going. So one thing I know about your children is they like to spend time together. Mm -hmm. They seem to always enjoy um, being together and doing things together. And do you think that 
that is something you guys fostered with the respectful talking and the doing things together? Is that the sort of thing? Yeah, I think so. Look, they do. They love hanging out together as young adults now, and that just makes me so proud. Yeah. Um, but I think it started right back at the beginning. Mm. Um, and, and what we tried to do in helping them to build positive relationships with each other, yeah. they're now... Uh, receiving the rewards of that mm. in the way that they just love hanging out together. Yeah. So, you know, my two girls especially, uh, they want to be down in Brisbane as often as they can, partly to hang out with their nephew now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but because they just genuinely like hanging out with their brother and sister-in-law. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's really great. important. One of the things that I, uh, I heard, again, a long time ago, was for parents to consider, what do you want your 13-year-old yes. to be like? Yeah. And that's what you start to bring in when they're three. Yes. And what do you want your 19 to be, old, to be like? That's what you start to establish when they're nine. Yeah. That 10 year gap of going, you know, I would want my, you know, for any parent to sit down and go, I want my young teenager to be this type of person. Yeah. That's what you establish at least 10 years in advance. Yeah. Um, because it's way too late to try to do that when they are suddenly 13. Yes. Uh, it's it's that, that intentionality, that, that forward planning yeah. to, to help your kids be the people that you want them to be. Yeah, and all that groundwork of relationship and yeah. trust and being part of a family yeah. is really great. Uh, so your family is quite unique as well as getting along. You've also been able to just encapsulate a whole other person. Yeah. So David and his wife have fostered um, a child who's now no longer a child, which makes it interesting because he still lives with you. Tell us about that journey. It was a really unexpected journey. Um, we'd had a young guy from school uh, here live with us for about four months or so, a few years back. Um, and, and that didn't particularly end with him staying around. But uh, it, was a, it was actually God preparing us for mm, the next thing that came up, which is so cool. Um, so Zef, uh, I taught when he first came to our school in year eight. Mm. Uh, and he had been in the foster system for a while. He'd moved in with a new family and that family had kids in our school. And so he was able to start in our school as well. Uh, and I got to know him and, and like any kid that's been through the foster system, there was a bunch of things about him mm. that were complex, yeah. that were probably trauma related. Um, and so for a couple of years through year eight, uh, year nine, um, I just caught up with him. There was a little bit of a mentoring sort of thing happening mm. there. At the end of year 10 and the very beginning of year 11, um, he needed a new placement. Uh, and there was some stuff happening in his life that was really pretty complex. Um, he still has uh, contact with his mum and dad, his biological parents. Uh, and all of that was playing into a fairly difficult place for mm. him. And anyway, long story short, uh, we took him in. Um, and uh, as, a, as an extra member of our family. We didn't expect it. We didn't put a hand up to be foster parents. It kind of got thrown our way and we, I was gonna say grab the baby. He wasn't the baby, <laughs> but you know, we grabbed it and we ran with it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's now been three and a half years. Yeah. Uh, and he is completely a part of our family, yeah. which is really cool. Cause for most kids when they're in the foster system, once they turn 17, they're in transition mm. from care. Yeah. Uh, and so the kids are effectively being put through this process of getting ready to stand on their own two feet mm. at 18. What 18 year old is really yeah. ready for that? Um, and so we'd said to Zef right from the beginning, um, you are here, you're a part of our family as much mm. as you want that to be the case. And we're not gonna ask you to go anywhere. Mm. So even through that year, we were able to say, you turn 18, for us, nothing changes. If you that's want awesome. to be here, you can continue to be here. And that's what the case was. So he calls uh, our biological kids, his brothers and sisters. Um, we had an interesting uh, navigation around what he calls us. <laughs> yes. Because uh, first morning after the night, first night he'd stayed with us, he got up and walked into the kitchen. He went, morning, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> that's not going to work, yeah. is it? So we navigated around all of that. He's got mum and he's got dad and he's got father and he's got mother. And that's okay. what he calls us. And he navigated that. But what I loved, what was the most beautiful thing in all of this journey was the way that our kids accepted him. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it was, what we were saying before about that intentionality. Yeah. Uh, they had already been on a bit of a journey with this other guy that lived with us for a while. And they were so accepting mm. of a new person being in our family unit. And that's not typical. No. Like, that's a hard thing to yeah. do. For our youngest daughter, who was the youngest in the family, 
She was no longer in that role <laughs> anymore. And that's a hard thing it to is. do. Uh, for the two girls who were still living at home, for them to suddenly have a boy back in the house, because my, my older son had moved yeah. out, uh, and, you know, um, drips that didn't make it into the toilet and all those sorts of boy <laughs> things that can happen, they had to deal with all of that and they did it graciously uh, and it was a beautiful thing to see. It's not always easy. Yeah. It hasn't always been easy, but that's the journey we've been on. Mm. And I think actually it strengthened us as a family yeah. because when you bring someone in, you start to look at who they are and what parts of them are common to yeah. who we are, but what parts are different that we need to now grow in in our yeah. own lives to be closer to the things that they need. Mm. Uh, we haven't always got it right. Mm. Uh, we've had some fairly heated battles <laughs> along the way, uh, and, and often because I've got it wrong. Mm. Um, but even in that, it's so important for parents to show kids that they got it wrong. Yeah. Uh, and I've probably had to do that far more with Zef being a part of our family and, and me going to him and saying, you know what, mate, I actually got that mm. wrong and I'm really sorry about that. So let's clear the air on this one and move on. Yeah. What have we both learnt that we can go forward mm. with? So that's kind of been the journey uh, yeah. and it's, it's actually, I think, really strengthened us as a family. Yeah, but I think you've got a really good, strong family foundation sure. that can actually take a little bit of the tussle of a new person coming in yeah, yeah. so you'll probably yeah. readjust too with the grandbaby coming in but you've got this great yeah. foundation yep. to build a, a family that will just increase yeah. out okay let's talk about traveling okay <laughs> yes we love <laughs> so this we love this so when we did our big trip a few years ago um David was on radio and would ring me each week yeah. and we'd have a chat on radio and you were the only other Australian I spoke to that whole time. I didn't mm. really talk to many people at home during those three months, but I did talk to you and beautiful Deb quite a bit. So tell us about how Canada and that experience yeah. shaped your family. I was, I guess in the lead up to going, I was so keen to have an experience, partly for me and partly for the family, um, that was different and unique. Mm. And um, I'd been teaching in another school than Highlands uh, and there were some teachers that had done teacher exchanges. Mm. Uh, and, and I was working in the state schools at that time and it was easy for that to happen. Much harder when I came here to Highlands, now more than 20 years ago. Yes. <laughs> uh, that, but, but I was able to navigate all of that with the principal at the time and effectively said, I want to be able to do a teacher exchange. So we found a place, we found a school, we found mm. a teacher. Uh, and Pam, the teacher, came and taught here. Okay. Uh, and we went and taught over there. We, sort cool. kind of, we kind of swapped lives. It was yeah. really quite amazing. We lived in her house, she lived in ours. Um, and she taught my job and I taught hers. Mm. But it was the best experience. Because while you guys travelled for six months and you went to how many countries? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, it was Lots. a lot, right? Yeah. We, and you were tourists. Yeah. We actually were in just one place yep. for six months. Mm. And you become a part of the community. And we yeah. joined a church and I ended up on the music team of the church. And, and a whole bunch of stuff that was like doing real life. Yes. But that's, that's what it was for the kids and for Judith as well. So they went to school uh, in this place. Mm. Um, and, you know, they were... Our two daughters especially were really nervous on the first day about, you know, no one's going to know us. And yeah. I said, it's okay, seriously, you will open your mouth, they will hear an Australian yes. accent <laughs> and everybody will want you to keep talking, which is exactly what happened. But all of the things that, that happened around that experience helped to define us as a family, yeah. be a common memory, mm. and it actually grew the kids in some yeah. really special ways. And Judith and I as well, mm. you know. Judith had been working uh, virtually full time. Mm. She didn't work in Canada, other than we said her job was through the week to plan what we would do every weekend. Oh, nice. So we had this touristy, lifey type yeah. thing where every single Saturday for six months, we went somewhere, we yeah. did something, and Judith would typically plan that. But when we came back, we had to slot into real life. Yeah. That was a challenge. And you guys know that even yeah. coming back from your trip, right? Yeah. Um, but what it did is that we had, as I said before, those common memories. Yes. Um, Judith is a journaler when we go on trips. Oh, cool. And, uh, and so we, in the year after we came back, or like six months after, and on the year date, we would sit at our dining table and we would read what we did oh, one year that's ago. So good. Because she journaled almost every single day. And yeah. it was so good to have those memories. And again, that was this foundational memory formation yeah. sort of thing that shaped us. Mm. A lot of people can't travel. We no. can't travel at the moment anyway. 
But like your trip, like my trip, like other things that we do, it's that founda foundational yeah. stuff as a family yeah. that, that forms you, that makes you a unit, that yeah. makes you something special and unique. Yeah. And it could be that you're all into motorbike riding or yeah. whatever it is, you've got dash hounds. Uh, <laughs> whatever it is that defines you as a family, yeah. hold on to that because yeah. that's key, it's, it's critical. Mm. I think the other thing in the trip was we had to find a church to go to. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to get into community quickly. So unlike what might happen if people move into a town and there's a variety of churches to go to, we actually went, here's the school. It's linked in a, in a loose way with this church. We want to be in community. So we're actually just going to choose to go to that mm -hmm. church. Cool. Not quite the sort of church that we would typically go to, but it, it meant that our community was close. Yeah. Uh, and that was a really good experience mm. because the kids and Judith and I had to start looking at church as something more than where we might get something out of it. Mm. But it was actually the fact that community is really important. Yeah. So for us, that was a key element of that time as well. Mm. And we came back going, what did we learn yeah. about church? What did we learn about ourselves? What did we learn about uh, stressful situations yeah. and how we deal with that? What did we laugh about? Yes. Because uh, there were plenty of times when, oh my goodness, you know, so many stories uh, about when something happened and you just end up laughing about yeah. it, you know. And yeah, yeah, that's a key part of a foundation of a family as yeah, well. Yeah, stories. Is laughing so good. with each other, at each sometimes other. at each other, but <laughs> with each other is really yeah. important. No, that is good. And yeah. we do that too with our trip. We um, kids will say, oh, this pizza's not as good as the pizza in Florence, <laughs> yeah, and you right. think, oh, don't say that in, out there too much. But yeah, it yeah. is really great to have yeah. things that we view together. So Mike and I often get to this point where we say, we just want the five of us in a car and we just want to go and go yeah, somewhere. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be something huge. You mm. can just all pile in the car and just drive just 10 minutes out of town and find a park mm. or a good coffee shop or... So just anything that links you together and gives you a bit of a moment. I think that's, that's what we got out of travel is trying to do those things that you would do overseas, but do them in your hometown. Mm -hmm. I think that's been good, especially during times when we can't travel as yeah. much. Do you think your kids are broader, like bigger, deeper people because of the travel as well? Yeah, yeah. for sure. I would um, say that. Yeah. So even um, being able to say that Simple things like we were in Notre Dame Cathedral about you know, a few months before, before it, burnt it burnt down, down and it was actually a moment when I journaled that, I was so proud of our kids because mm. we lined up in the rain for a few hours and then we went in and everywhere it says to be silent and I thought, oh, how do you keep three children silent? But they were and they came out of it and said we felt like we'd been to church yeah. and it was like, oh, that's such a great thing that they've learnt that they learnt that kind of cultural thing in that You've spot. instilled respect. Yeah. That's so important. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was great because, no, the trip wasn't all about fun. We also did cultural things and we mm. also visited very sad places and we mm. hoped that they got a really good experience yeah, of yeah. different parts of the world. And I would, I would hope the takeaway for parents in that little bit about travel is that it's not so much about travel. No. It's actually about taking whatever opportunities yeah. you have got or can create to do those things. Yeah. You know, it might be that going to a park means that you you sit and you simply talk about what's beautiful in this place That's or what's right. lovely about yeah. us being together yes. here. Um, and I know there are families where there'll be at least one kid in the family that's going, I do not want to be going to the park. Just let me <laughs> sit in the corner yes. and mope. Yes. You know? And that can happen, and especially with young adolescents. That can be part of their, their journey of growth. Yes. But finding something where everyone's at least moderately comfortable <laughs> <laughs> to be able to do it together is important. Yeah. And like I said before, starting that early, yeah. you know, acknowledging that we're different, but we're the same. Yeah. We all are individual people in a family, yet we are a family. Yeah. We've got something that binds us together and finding yeah. those things is important. It's foundational. Yeah. And being really, really obtuse about it. We often do this with our kids on a Sunday night dinner. We'll say, let's all say something funny about a memory from here yeah. or uh, Michael's a bit more sensitive than I am and he'll say, let's all, these are the good memories I have about each of you. Yep. And then we all kind of go, oh, and I have this, you know, this is what I love about you and I love about you. And then it will always turn to, oh, remember this funny thing that happened here yep. and yep. just intentionally sharing memories that build that 
connection to each other. And you know what I love about you doing that, say you say every Sunday night, it's a tradition. Yes. It's something that actually becomes part of your family. Yeah. And we've done the same thing. We have family traditions. So every Easter, there will be mm. certain things that will happen. Um, usually because my, life, my wife loves chocolate. And so <laughs> she will go off and buy all of the Easter chocolate that's cool. possibly available. Um, but she will set it out a, a little cup or something or other for every member of the family, um, sometimes including the dog now. Uh, and, uh, but there will be a sign that says something like, you know, Jesus is risen um, for the Sunday. Uh, uh, it'll be the traditions around every Easter we also go away on holidays mm. and our family has come together. Now, it's a lot harder now that they're working, and, yeah. but we still have that time where we book a place and they come to us yeah. whenever they can. That's cool. um, you know, you guys have done traditions around things in that space as well. Yeah, we have. We also do a thing um, at dinner. We'll say, what did you like doing today? And, or what didn't work for you today? So much so that when people come for dinner, our kids will ask them and people always go, oh, um, <laughs> Oh, let me yeah. have a think what I like doing today. Yeah. Whereas I think it gives kids a language on how to be positive and to actually reflect on their day. I think that's good mm. too. Yeah. 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 Do you have traditions at times of the year? Oh, we, I really love Christmas. Yeah. I think Christmas is great because we finished work for the year, uh, but we love the tree. All our decorations are from travel. Yep. So you hang them and say, oh, we got this in New Zealand. And I got We're the same. Here. We've got the same sort of things love for it. travel. Love yeah. it. And time-lapse video, putting up the tree. And Easter is um, yep. Michael saying, let's not do too much chocolate and me not listening. Oh, that sounds like our family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And so we just try and have these markers that just really prioritise family and celebrating mm, stuff. Yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be the big things at key moments through the year. You can have things on a weekly basis. Yeah. So it might be, well, I mean, for many people, it'll be as simple as going to church on a Sunday morning. True. Or it might be that in the evening, we always say grace before dinner. Or for us, Sunday night is catch and kill. Yes, um, we do that too for well, because of you. It's a Skinner you. thing. It, oh, Jenny Skinner it? mentioned it to us originally. <laughs> um, and they were talking about catch and kill. So we do that on a Sunday night, which basically You probably is, should explain that. What, what catch and kill what is. catch and kill yeah, actually yeah. It's is. basically, uh, we're not going to prepare a meal. Uh, once you're big enough to be able to do it yourself, uh, go for it. If you can find the food and you can prepare it, you can have it. As long as it's not the T-bone steak well, that I was planned for the I, week. I was going <laughs> to say, I do remember when Zeph defrosted a steak. Yes. Yeah, but um, anyway, we won't go there. That's great. <laughs> but like, it, that's still a tradition. Yeah. It's something that, that is a, a key element of what you do on a weekly basis. It's foundational. We yeah. keep coming back to that yeah. word. Well, that is. It's so important. It's building a good, strong foundation so yeah. that your family can withstand stuff. That's the key point, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's actually about being able to... I'm so glad you said that. I hadn't thought of that. It's, it <laughs> is about withstanding stuff. Because when you've got a strong foundation, key elements in your family, mm. when the hits come, because yeah. they will, you've actually got something that says this is who we are yeah. and we know from that foundation that we're actually going to be able to deal with the things that are coming our way. Yeah. So I want to give you three really uh, easy to remember tips on how to build a strong family foundation. So we'll talk about those. The first one is a shared faith. Yeah. So um, having, a, having some sort of con heart connection, a faith in God, a community in church, mm. those sort of things actually really build a really strong family. And your family is a testament to that. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I honestly don't know what we've done to end up with the sort of kids that mm. we have in terms of their faith. Um, but I am so grateful that all of our kids, all, all five young adults now that are part of our family, um, are in that place where their mm. faith is such a key element to yeah. it. Uh, I, I know one of the things that I've tried to be intentional about is, particularly with my two sons, um, I want them to be better men than I was at that age. Mm. I actually want to be self-reflective. Um, I want mm. to think about who I was at, so Hayden, my older son's 25. Um, I, want to, I want to think about who I was at 25, what I didn't get right at that mm. time, and what I can help him to do better than me. And the same yeah. with my daughters. You know, how can I make them better than they are? Yeah. And around faith issues, that means lots of conversation. Yeah. 
Uh, it means sometimes debates. It means you know understanding that one of our kids especially wants to debate everything uh, <laughs> and allowing them to do so. Yeah. And not shutting them down, but helping them through that debate process to guide them in a particular way. Yeah, And that leads to point number two, which is to be present. Yeah. I don't think you can ever give kids enough time. Mm. Um, I know that there's this whole quality time thing, but I think it's a quantity time. Mm. I think you just give kids as much time as you can, whether it's cutting carrots or going to the park or going yeah. to the movies. I just don't think you can give them enough time just mm. to have that relationship. My wife uh, helps out with some uh, a group at our church with young mums, and um, she she's a mentor there. Um, but she will say often to those people, don't think that this is the time of mm. your life when you have to give most time to your kids mm. and it gets less as they get older. Mm. It's actually often the reverse. Yeah. As your kids get older, time is needed with your kids, yeah. usually in different ways, yeah. but it is just as critical and sometimes it takes even more time. Mm. Um, but it looks different. Yeah. So for a, a young uh, adolescent, for example... Uh, and particularly a boy, sitting like we are is not necessarily the best way to go. <laughs> it's often more shoulder to shoulder without even eye yeah. contact, but just giving time and space for them to process and think and talk and, yeah. uh, and be reflective with them and bounce some questions to get them chatting. and yeah. That's critical, but you can't do that in a short time frame. No. You've got to give them plenty of time. So you've got to carve out that yeah. time for the kids to be able to... Uh, unpack who they are yeah. and explore who they are and learn new things about who they're going to be. And the last tip, so tip number three, is to celebrate each other. Mm. I think that's really important for a family to celebrate the achievements of all of its members, but also, also just to take moments to have traditions and just to actually celebrate. I think life can be really boring <laughs> if you don't mark moments with some sort of celebration. And that links back to the previous point about time. Yeah. It actually takes time uh, and, a, and a deliberate decision to get those things happening. Yeah. And yet the investment from that is significant. Yes. Um, so, you know, find that time, but then, yeah, make something mm. significant happen, even if it's really small, those traditions that define your family, that's the foundation that you build on. We've started a thing um, a few years ago when our kids get our get report cards and if they're really good, we'll go out for dinner and just yep. celebrate what a great semester you've had. Yeah. And it's always hog's breath and it's always, you know, it's the kids know that. They're like, oh, we've just had reports. If they're good, we'll go out. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's taking the time to just sit back and acknowledge what they've done yeah. and what we're proud of. We used to do the same thing. Uh, you know, end of the year, we would all go out to dinner uh, to dinner somewhere, uh, and it was about celebrating mm. the year. It reminded me of one other thing that, that I want to mention that was really important too, is that for a lot of years, especially through upper primary and into the first part yeah. of high school, we did dates, ah, parent yes. dates, and we would be on rotation, if you like. <laughs> so, you know, Judith would go one month with one child, and then I would go the next month with another child. Yeah. There was always one-on-one, -on -one, and it was just an opportunity to sit and talk one-on-one -on -one with the kids yeah. in a really... And they'd choose the restaurant they wanted to go yeah. to, you know. Um, didn't really matter. Yeah. But it was that key time, one-on-one uh, -on -one with a parent. Yeah. So important. See, I tend to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one things with the kids. I will say, oh, who wants to come and just pick up the groceries with me? And someone will go, oh, I'll come. And then it mm. ends up, oh, I'll buy you a hot chocolate and we'll make Bribery a bit works. more of a date of it. <laughs> uh, whereas Michael's really good at being really intentional about having one-on-one -on -one time with mm. the kids because he just is busier and not as available. So mm. I think it's great to, to make that time to celebrate each of your kids. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. It is, isn't it? It's celebrating each one of your kids as a unique person. Yeah. So within your family context, have your traditions, form your family, but also acknowledge you've got individuals mm. and how do you find time with each one of them to help them to grow in the specific things yeah. that are happening in their life. Well, I like to give a takeaway at the end of each of our episodes. And so this one, inspired by you, is to celebrate something with your family. So whether a child has done something amazing this week or whether you want to celebrate just being together, you don't need much of a reason. I guess my challenge is as a family to choose something to celebrate and make a moment. Thank you so much for coming, David. What a pleasure. Oh, I think we could probably talk about so much, but um, thank you for all your wisdom 
and uh, we've given, you've given me lots of things to think about, so that's great. And thank you for joining us for another episode and we look forward to seeing you again.